Okay, so I finally broke down and got into the whole cooler thing that everyone's been raving about for the past several years. Ever since Yeti created a really, really awesome, super, super insulated cooler that could hold ice for like 10 days. Now, there's a backstory to this, so let me talk about that. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so I am certainly one of those people who will not spend a certain amount of money on a cooler because for me, I always thought, you know what, a traditional Walmart, you know, Coleman cooler or Igloo cooler was just fine and they perform just fine. Haven't had any issues with them. They seem to hold ice for a few days and that's all I really cared about until I cared about more. And let me give you a backstory to this. So we had a get together here at the house and believe it or not, I really don't even have a cooler. I've bought these cheap coolers that I've always gotten uh, at the local store, whatever it is, Walmart or Target. And most of the time I spend like 30 or 40 bucks on a cooler and it ends up turning to crap after a relatively short period of time because really the ones I get have the little retractable handles or telescoping handles. And the problem with those is that they rust or you start having problems, at least at the price point I was purchasing them at. So when Yeti and several other brands came out with these really cool, huge insulated coolers with really thick sidewalls, I actually thought it was cool, but a fad. I thought it was just something that people were gonna like for a while, kind of like Yeti cups, right? Everyone went and bought a $30 cup or a $40 cup, uh, which was probably more than they'd ever pay for a normal cup, just to have that type of cup. And then people started realizing that they're actually really, really good. They do what they claim they do really, really well, so much so that they were a theft target for a lot of people. You know, heaven forbid you left one of these on your boat because it was likely to disappear. It was likely to get stolen. Or if you left your garage open, there's a big black market trade for stolen coolers on Craigslist and everywhere else. So when you take a cooler, which has a very, very high value and you mix it in with a trend that's going on, you really leave yourself open for theft. You leave yourself open for people who might wanna take what you have. And I noticed that. I saw people's coolers getting stolen. I'd heard about it on the news. I've heard of uh, you know, altercations between people over a cooler. Now, why am I going over all of this? It's because those have been the exact reasons why I've stuck with the traditional, I'm gonna say sub $60 cooler. I just haven't really felt like spending a lot of money on one because I never felt that it was something worth spending that much money on and then having to protect like it's a piece of jewelry. So, you know, fast forward several years, actually up until maybe about a month ago, uh, you know, we had a get together here and my father brought his big igloo cooler, you know, the one you pick up at Walmart for about a hundred bucks and it's white, it's, it looks relatively robust for what it is. And he left it here. Uh, after everything was done, the party was over, you know, there were still some drinks and some ice in it. And it just sat out here on the back patio for like two weeks. Um, and during that time, people were grabbing whatever drinks were left as they wanted to drink. There was some beer in there, there's some Dr. Peppers in there, there were some other colas and stuff that people wanted to grab. And I noticed that the ice, you know, lasted a decent amount of time. And I, I started thinking, you know, every time we have an event, there's always that question, who's bringing ice? And when they'd bring the ice here, I always hoped that somebody would have a means of cooling because I didn't have a cooler here. Uh, the cooler that I have is at the other house and we just, honestly don't use it very much anymore because the handle's frozen on it, it won't move. Um, it's filthy, we have to clean the thing out because it's not sealed real well. And quite frankly, every time I see it, I kind of wonder when we're gonna throw it away. So I started thinking I need something to hold ice. I need something that when we have a big get together, we have a lot of people over, I want something that's gonna be very, very functional and practical. And I started hunting for a cooler. And just like everyone else who probably is hunting for a good quality cooler, there are a ton of them out there, including the famous Yeti cooler, which I'm sure a lot of you all own. Whether it's the soft-sided cooler or the hard-shelled cooler, I'm sure you guys have them and you understand the benefit of having a cooler that can hold ice for 10 days. Me personally, I don't. I really don't think I would ever have ice or anything in a cooler for more than a few days, and it would probably be the remnants of whatever type of get together or gathering we had. But I didn't really feel, and I still don't feel the need for a cooler 
uh, because we don't have a boat and I still don't feel like we have a need for a cooler to hold ice for 10 days or to hold anything cold for anywhere near that period of time. But I did need one that could hold a substantial amount of ice for a relatively long period if we have a get together, right? If we have a social gathering, if we have people coming over to the house, we have a family reunion, anything like that. So I wasn't on a hunt for something small. I was looking for something relatively large. And unfortunately, if you look at the prices of most coolers, they are astronomical once you get into those larger ones that are like this. Yeti, I think, is in the, shoot, probably five to six to seven hundred dollar range, even higher than that. And if you get one with a wheels package or a wheel kit on it, it jumps up even a couple more hundred bucks. And I really don't understand why. Um, I actually ordered one off of Amazon. It wasn't a Yeti. I ordered a, I can't even think of the name. It was kind of an off name. I think Costco sells them. But I ordered one, and then I realized after kind of searching around, figuring out the reviews on it, that the cooler I just ordered for like $300 uh, didn't review very well compared to other coolers that were supposed to be premium professional coolers. And I would have paid a lot more considering that cooler goes on sale for like 100 bucks in the, the fall and winter time. So it made me believe it's certainly still going to be valuable and profitable to Costco or whoever sells it during winter and fall but or fall and winter but why would a cooler that sells for a hundred bucks then sell for like three hundred dollars during spring and summer i know it's because demand is high and people use them more but again it made me wonder am i really getting a good value here or should i just wait on those so you know i got into this big cooler hunt i started even looking at some websites that sold knockoff and generic coolers as well that looked just like a yeti looked just like these but were less expensive and then you found out that a lot of those coolers looked the same but they didn't pack the sidewalls with foam so there was no real insulation here it just kind of had the overall look without the actual physical uh you know insulating characteristics and then i started looking at other ones and i found out that some of the real cheap ones have really cheap straps here some of the plastics real brittle and here's the big one that they start to warp if you put them in the sun. And I can attest to that. We had somebody bring a cooler out here, left it on the deck and the sun hit it for like a week and the lid warped like this. So what I didn't wanna do was go in several hundred dollars on a cooler and figure out that it just wasn't gonna perform well. And I was hunting and hunting and researching and researching and I ended up finding one from a company online that seemed like it had reasonable reviews. The cooler was pretty cool, uh, no pun intended, and it was 110 quarts. So it was a good size capacity cooler. And I went ahead and ordered it, and it's actually on its way in. And I paid like 250 bucks for it. It has reasonable reviews, and I'm really excited to see what it's like once it comes in. But after I ordered that cooler, you know, I decided, you know what, let me reach out to my folks over at eTrailer. My sponsor's there, right? They're my official channel sponsor. Maybe they have a cooler. Maybe they have one that they've reviewed and they've showcased and they have good things to say about it. And lo and behold, they did. They responded back to me and said, you know what, Bulldog Winch makes a really awesome cooler. It's about 150, 200 bucks less than an equivalent Yeti. And it's got some features and characteristics that people typically would want in a Yeti, but can't get. So I said, why don't you send me one? I'd be happy to kind of talk about it and see if I, if I like it, especially once my new cooler comes in, I'll be able to kind of compare and contrast. So in front of you, super, super long story short, you're looking at the new Bulldog 110 quart cooler. Now this thing is huge and it's 110 quarts. It's massive. It doesn't really look that way because it's certainly kind of more of a, a squarish rectangular shape than the real long, normally over 110 quart coolers you might see. So how does this thing look on the inside? First of all, before we get to the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features. So just like pretty much all of these types of coolers, it has a little area here on each side so you can throw a padlock on here if you're afraid someone's gonna steal your uh, refreshing beverage inside. It has these really cool straps. I love the way they do these here. This is so much cooler. This is more like a, a Pelican case in my opinion versus the rubber straps you have to stretch down and put over a, a little clip. This one, you flip up like this. Very cool, that's it. You can open it up. Now, I know that a lot of people with Yetis, because I even have friends with Yetis that claim you can sometimes get pressure built up inside of a Yeti that makes it very difficult to open. So the fo folks at Bulldog actually address that by putting a pressure release button right here. So if this thing has that type of pressure and you're finding it difficult to open, you can simply press this button and release the pressure. Very similar to what you might see on a Pelican case or a Storm case. So I really like that. It's got a bottle cap opener here as well. It's got some really thick, nice rubber grab handles to lift it up. 
you got your traditional drain plug down here at the bottom as well and you don't have to pull it out completely you can just loosen it and then it will drain through that little hole right there which is really nice and also if you're big into fishing you have your little measurement scale here on top so if you have this inside of your boat you have the ability to uh, take a measurement of the fish to hopefully ensure it is legal let's flip this thing on its back real quick so you know, I haven't looked close enough at Yeti coolers to see if they have big rubber feet on the bottom. They might, they may not. I honestly don't know. I just haven't looked. But this one has these big rubber feet that are attached to the bottom to uh, give it a little bit of traction and grip whenever you have it, you know, in your boat, on the back deck, wherever it's going to be. This thing is super heavy, so I don't think you have to worry about it blowing away in the wind. But yeah, very, very cool. But let's open this thing up and see what it's about. All right, so you can see the rubber seal that goes all the way around here. Super, super cool. Um, it has these really nice little slots so you can put cutting boards and dividers and different things in here to separate what you might have inside of here. So you might have like soft drinks, you may have sandwich making materials, you may have other types of, you know, alcoholic beverages and something else on this side and you can have these dividers. I do wish they would have just included them or maybe even one divider, but I think they're all accessories because on here you can see what the optional accessories are. You have a cup holder, you have a wire basket. Uh, you can use it for, I guess, anything you'd wanna throw in a wire basket. Maybe you have something that you wanna keep separate from fish and stuff like that. Or you can use kind of a combination of things with these dividers and the wire basket. That's very cool. This is the 110 quart size. You can see all the other sizes. For us, this is gonna be really nice to take along if we go camping. It's gonna be really nice to keep out here at the property for events and things like that. Uh, the side walls are three inches thick. Um, in terms of how it compares to a Yeti, I, I can't really tell you. I mean, to be honest, I could probably grab a buddy's Yeti. We could put it next to each other, throw a couple bags of ice inside of it. But like I said from the beginning, I'm not looking for a cooler to keep a, a bag of ice in here for 10 days. I think most of the time when people put ice in these things, it's a constant opening and closing door, right? People want to get their ice out. They want to get their drinks out. They want to do other things. And it's very likely that somebody might actually keep the door propped open. And if that's the case, your ice is going to melt. It's going to start melting quick. Once you close close it and it can kind of insulate itself and retain that cold air well then yeah it's going to continue to cool but i don't know many people who just pack these things full of ice unless there's some type of disaster coming along and you just need to stock up on ice for the disaster i don't know but yeah this thing is really cool how it's designed um the dimensions maybe they go over them here i think they do so for the 110 quart it weighs 43.56 pounds it is 20 or about 21 inches tall, 20.98. And you can see how they kind of do this here, which is interesting because I, I honestly don't really know why they put the measurements on here the way that they do. And part of the, the way they do this is the fact that the interior kind of tapers out slightly. It's not like a perfect squared off. You can see it kind of goes out a little bit like this right here. But yeah, it certainly has a ton of capacity. And the fact is, I can load this thing up with ice, I can load this thing up with drinks, I can load this thing up with food, whatever we need. Throw it in the back of the truck, throw it in the RV, put it on the luggage rack of the back of the RV. Um, as long as you're not exceeding the uh, payload capacity of your luggage rack and you understand that you shouldn't put too much weight on the back. Of course, there's my big RV disclaimer. And have a really, really huge trunk style cooler to take with us or to use out here. Very, very cool. You can see how the straps are kind of tied off right here and how they wrap around when you pull it up. These little clips right here look to be replaceable. So they make it serviceable, which I guess is probably an improvement over some other design that they saw. Most of these coolers that you see are trying to compete against Yeti. There's no doubt about it. And they're trying to come in at a more aggressive price. Um, in terms of overall cooling, I think I read that this is designed for like seven days of ice keeping, whereas a Yeti is like 10 days. But again, the reality is it really depends on the conditions that you're using it in. I am not calling a Yeti a bad product. I'm calling a Yeti a very expensive functional product that a lot of people love. And if you're looking for an alternative at a lower price, considering everything else that's out there, and you wanna support the channel a little bit by, by shopping with one of my channel sponsors, you may wanna take a look at Bulldog Winch coolers. They make a bunch of them. This is their largest one, very convenient. This specific one does not have wheels on it. Um, I kind of wish it did, but it doesn't. So I'll live with that and just deal with it and just have a buddy of mine help heft it around if we need to move it around too much. 
but very, very cool. I will put a link in the description of this video if this is something you're interested in. Definitely want to give a big shout out to my official channel sponsor, eTrailer.com, for providing this for me for review and evaluation on the channel. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, go get yourself a frosty beverage, put it inside of a Bulldog Winch cooler, and uh, we'll talk to you again very soon.